it's a privilege, y'all, to live in America. Amen. We've Amen. got zits and diseases and fungus and all sorts of stuff growing on us. I wish we didn't. But we're still, like Tommy said a few minutes ago, in my opinion, the greatest nation on the face of the earth. And we're that way not because of our goodness, but because we've got a gracious God. Amen. If anybody didn't believe in God, in my opinion, all they got to do is look at America, past and present, and realize somebody somewhere is doing something right, and we know it ain't us. But uh, anyway, it's good to have everybody here today. Uh, I appreciate you coming out in the rain. Some of y'all are taking great uh, risk at messing up them hairdos you've got, <laughs> like myself. Carol, sit down. You're cold in the rug. <laughs> Just uh, not only did Bill come in toting the baby today, uh, I've got a special treat with me today. I've got my family there on the back row back there. Don't anybody turn around and look at them. <laughs> but uh, you'll probably notice one uh, that don't look at all like me, except he's got whiskers. Uh, and on that row, I don't want you to look now, of course, but we've got, of course, the ultimate male. We've got the ultimate male number two. He's the one with a hairdo. And then I thought a little bit earlier, I was going to say we got the, uh, the ultimate female, but we actually got the three best-looking females south of the Mason-Dixon line. And they're all back there on that back row. So if you get bored, slam the death of my preaching, just turn around and gaze at them. That'll be a blessing to you. Be sure and notice the cat with a hair you here. Don't mind to go like that. But anyway. 1 Peter chapter 5, I'm going to ask you to join me. Oh, by the way, while you're turning, I hid this thing specifically behind my umbrella. I had a birthday last week, and it dawned on me about halfway through the week, one of the other blessings of getting old is you get presents. Amen? You obviously didn't hear what I said. You be There it is. You get presents. <laughs> but hey, man, I'm going to start having a couple of them a year. And uh, one other thing, then, I don't want nobody to get in a panic here. <laughs> Maybe I do want you to get in a panic. When I see somebody, they're falling asleep. <laughs> and I'm going to aim it at whoever's sleeping. So if you need some relief, just punch them in the ribs, you know, wake them up, or if you like them, just punch them. Isn't that neat, y'all? Now, see, 50 years ago, 60 years ago, my mama would have said, put that down, I'm going to break your arm. <laughs> now I can do what I'm going to do I want to. Eh? So getting the whole ain't so bad, y'all. I'm going to start cutting this thing off. But I got it close if I need it. 1 Peter chapter 5, I'm going to pick up reading with verse number 1. We've been uh, working our way through this passage, first seven verses. This is a study that I've entitled Feed the Flock, and it's the third part. I don't know how far we'll get today, as is often the case, going over my notes just a little while ago. There ain't no way in the world I can preach all this. They'll be so mad at me, they won't come back. That's why some of got empty seats here today, but anyway. Verse 1, the elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, Neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fades not away. Likewise, the younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth.
for you. Let's all pray together, if you will. And Father, we count it a privilege with everything in us to have a Bible. Yeah. We believe that it's your word. That's why it's so important to us. So what a privilege it is to be able to open up your word here this morning and hear what you have to say. God, we're so sorry for what we've done here in America to the greatest nation that's ever been. But Lord, you've not given up on us yet or we wouldn't be here. Please then help us, even the handful of us that there are here today, please help us to hear your word and just put it into practice in our lives. That's all that matters. That's all we're going to have to give account for. So Father, help us now. Only you can do it. Open our eyes that we may be see. Behold, wondrous things out of thy law. We ask it in Christ's name and all God's people said. Amen. 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 Now thus far, in this last chapter of the book of 1 Peter, we found God through Peter telling the elder, telling the pastor to feed God's flock, oversee the operation. Not because you have to, but because you want to. Not for the money, but because it's your passion. Not merely telling people what to do, but showing folks how to do. What a lesson that is. And then when the chief shepherd shall appear, and that's literally when the chief shepherd, and that's Jesus, becomes apparent. I love words, I love the details, and I love to find out what the details tell us. So, that being the case, two quick points I want to make here. Anybody believe quick points? Don't say anything. Number one, notice when he appears, not if he appears. Right? We don't want to miss that. The Bible speaks of Jesus appearing as a fact. It's already been decided. Amen. It's already on God's calendar. The angels, as the old boy said, are already polishing up their trumpets, practicing their fanfare. The banquet table is being prepared. And it's interesting to me also, point number two, that our passage uses the word appear. Appear. When the chief shepherd shall appear. Uh, somebody told me the other day, George, you know, speaking of me, I'd be better off to leave the Greek alone when you're here. <laughs> and I won't sure you was going to be here today, so here goes the Somebody hand him a hanky or some earplugs or something. But anyway, it's the word uh, fenero, uh, and it literally means to become a parent. Uh, so the deal is when the chief shepherd shall become a parent, uh, and that's a, a slightly different twist than just simply when he shows up. The problem that many people have today is that Jesus is not a parent. He's not a parent. Uh, some of y'all got socks on today. Amen? Some of you don't. It wouldn't be a parent unless you took your shoes off and walked around the church for a while. <coughs> You leave your shoes on, sit still, it's not apparent. See, that took me a long time to think that up, so just even a nod of appreciation would be <laughs> helpful there. But anyway, in other words, right now he's not obvious, he's not conspicuous, he's not noticeable, he's not visible. And someone may have said, I'm not a practicing Christian because I'm not sure even if he really exists. I'm not sure that uh, what the Bible says really is so, and I'm not sure that this bunch of churches really have it right. Uh, these things aren't apparent to me. Well, may I promise you four things. Number one, there probably are a bunch of churches that do not have it right, but number two, what the Bible says really is the truth, y'all. Yeah. And number three, Jesus really does exist. And number four, don't mess up and treat Jesus like some folks have treated the IRS. Now, everybody knows what the IRS, they say IRA, uh, but the IRS. Does anybody know about the IRS? Amen. Look it up in the dictionary, it's got a picture of some old boy shedding tears. It's the internal revenue 
service. Doesn't that bless your heart just to say things like that? Don't you love paying taxes? Somebody called me down not long ago. Yeah, but our taxes buy good stuff. Oh, I realize that. But there's a whole lot I'd love to say right now, but I ain't going to say it. It just tickles the starch out of me what I'm thinking about. But anyway, the IRS, y'all, may not be apparent to you, like others who have treated them that way, but it does exist. And uh, even though the IRS may not be apparent yet, don't pay your taxes for about two years. And you'll get a personal note in the mail marked official business. Amen? If you don't respond correctly, you'll soon receive a registered letter with a big stamp, receipt confirmation required. If you don't respond correctly to that, it will soon become apparent that they are, one, garnering your wages, two, attaching your bank accounts, three, seizing your assets, four, ain't heard it, but it won't surprise me, selling your children into slavery. <laughs> Do you get the drift here? They may not be apparent yet, but they exist. And isn't it a blessing? Jesus, though not apparent, does exist. Amen. He's seated at the right hand of the Father, and He will become apparent to every single person in one of two ways. And I'm not trying to be a wise guy here, but the Bible plainly states, He'll become apparent, one, when you die. Everybody here plan on dying? A couple of you haven't raised your hand up. Don't worry, you don't have to plan on it, I promise you. But all of a sudden one day, and I ain't sure how it's going to work, the Bible indicates there's going to be like transport angels. Angels that come get you. Okay? You say, what's that going to be like? I ain't got a clue, y'all, but the dead man, we're told, uh, Lazarus, what, Luke 16, the angels came, got him, and towed him away. What's it going to be like when you wake up and two strangers have got you by the scruff of the neck, towing you somewhere? <laughs> I believe, I believe. <laughs> Anybody? Where's my blue and sour? I mean, I try to be a good sport, but I can't figure out how to use that. But it'll blow if you ain't careful. Another way that he'll become apparent uh, is when the clouds roll back. Uh, do you ever think about that? We got clouds out there this morning, I'm sure. In fact, for the last couple of weeks around here, just tremendous shows up in the sky. But the, actually, I misstated there. It, the, the Bible says the sky is going to roll back. Now, I'm not smart about stuff like that. The sky is the blue up there. And it dawned on me some years ago that even when it's dark here, the sky is still blue. Everybody know that? I didn't know that. We had a, a, a heavy lightning thunderstorm, man, the sky went woof, and it's bright blue. I thought, son of a gun, it didn't turn black, it's still blue up there. Everybody got that? You've been worried about it. <laughs> the Bible says the sky's going to roll back, and my problem is, what's going to be there when the sky rolls back? I ain't got a clue, but it's going to happen. The sky's going to roll back. At that point, it may start becoming apparent to you that there's something you ain't counted on fixing to happen. After the sky rolls back, the archangel's going to holler. You say, I get enough of that at church. You ain't hear nothing yet, y'all. He's going to holler out, and then if that don't get your apparent uh, whatever's going, the Bible says the dead are going to rise up out of their graves. Amen. Would that shock any of y'all in here? It wouldn't me. I've helped put a few of them down. <laughs> and they told me, in fact, I saw it on TV the other night, it ain't been too long ago, they invented those crank machines where you don't have to just fling them. You know, you, when we go down, Jerry, they're going to let us down easy. Crank, 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 down they go. 
And then they put the concrete lid on top of it. I don't know how all this is going to work, y'all. And I say it's smiling, but it's going to be a sight to behold when the dirt comes off, the concrete lid comes off, that $17 million lid on that box you bought, because don't you care about Grandma, that's going to come off, and up she's going to come. Now, I don't know about you, but at that point, something's becoming apparent. Amen. Amen. Just because you don't see him now, don't mean he ain't so. You're going to meet him. I'm going to meet him. I've had a change take place in my life. Meeting him used to scare me. The thought of meeting him now, i got to quit hollering. wonder if I could turn that thing around backwards. <laughs> Calm me down a little bit. Meeting him now is my highest desire. I'm not worthy. And there's so many things I've had to apologize for. But he's washed me. And I'm going to meet him one day. Amen. Oh, good gracious. So anyway, it's at that point. We're also told that the pastor and the elder is going to receive a crown of glory that fades not away. One last definition for this part. That word receive there, easy on me, George. It literally means take away. The elder's going to take away a crown. And I just picture, you know, you're walking up to the lunch line in the cafeteria in school, getting what you want, taking it away to your table. I don't know how this is going to work, but we're promised there, get a hold of that crown, take it away, go on about our heavenly business. How long is it going to last, y'all? Forever. Forever. Well, you say, is that any longer than you preach? Yeah. <laughs> Forever. I love it. Anyway, we'll go along. Well, then we found verse 5. Likewise, you younger, submit yourselves to the elder. We notice that the word likewise ties together. As you're studying this thing, the first four verses and then the next three verses, uh, if you will, it focuses in, it fine-tunes uh, the message or the direction given to the pastor. And basically this, pastor, submit. Submit to God's will for your life, for your calling. Uh, do not reinvent the office of pastor to suit your fancy, to follow a trend, to please some carnal church member. Just submit to the will of God. That's your call. That's what a disciple is and does. Amen? Somebody that does what God tells them to do. You're God's man with God's call to do God's will. Submit to that thing. Then comes verse 5 through 7. And what address is addressed there is the concept or the dynamic of submit, submission, subjection, and three other relationships. Ties this whole thing together. Number one, the younger to the older, verse 5. Number two, one to another, verse 5. And then those who are suffering... Submit to God, implied, verses 6 and 7. Submit, subject, you'll find it translated two different ways in uh, these couple of verses. It's the Greek word hupotasso, easy word to define and understand. Hupos under, tassos to arrange in an orderly fashion. Arrange yourself under in an orderly fashion. That's what submit, submission, subjection Mean. Somebody says, why all these definitions? <clears throat> I spent a lot of time uh, looking at the dictionaries. In fact, uh, little Gabriel was upstairs with me, I guess it's just yesterday, in my study for a few minutes, and I was trying to show him on the computer screen, <clears throat> hey, look here, Bob. This here is the Hebrew text. This here is the uh, Hebrew dictionary. And I go from one, you know, point and click and all this kind of stuff, Y'all, I'm one smart motor scooter right now. <laughs> I bought a computer not long ago and it didn't even say point and click no more. It said touch. I'm thinking, I just got point and click. Why didn't we got a good chance? Anyway, I showed him, he was impressed. He said, show me that pistol again. Yeah. Like you all. <laughs> same, same, uh, Response. Why the definitions? Well, it helps me understand better what's being said. 
Uh, I, like you, believe that the Bible is literally the Word of God. So anything I can do to help me understand it better, then I can live my life better. Uh, it's just that simple. So you, you bear with me, you have some of you for many years now, but that's why. So relationship number one. Ye younger, verse 5, submit yourselves unto the elder slash the older. Now, I grew up in a day uh, when this was standard operating procedure. Uh, children were taught to respect their elders. Uh, if a person was older, you opened the door for them. Uh, you gave them your seat. You referred to them as sir or ma'am. Can anybody remember those days? I remember to the day walking down the sidewalk, some uh, young man looked like he was 30, 40, something like that, called me sir. It won't a blessing. <laughs> I thought, I know older than you, Hoss. Who are you calling, sir? You want to wrestle right here and prove this thing? <laughs> But now that I'm old, things have changed, sir and ma'am. In fact, I remember even my parents' close friends, we were taught to refer to them as Mr. Joe or Mr. Bill and, and Miss Wendy or Miss So-and-so. Uh, and this is just me. In fact, one other one, maybe this uh, applied to you, or even uncle. Anybody? Uncle Don, Uncle Jerry, Uncle Lee, or Aunt So and So, or Aunt, where you know wherever you come from. To me, it's rather apparent, quote unquote, that uh, this is no longer standard operating procedure. These days, a polite, respectful young person stands out. Uh, someone said, like a blooming rose in a weed patch. Anybody know what I'm talking about? We were at McDonald's just the other day, standing in line. Now, there was more room behind me, between me and the mustard and the ketchup, than there was between me and the, the, the cat in front of us. And some rascal comes walking like from one side of McDonald's to the other side, and walks between uh, me and my son in the counter. Does stuff like that bother anybody? <laughs> I thought to myself, now look here, Hoss. As old as I am, I'm liable to have a stroke right here, fall on you, and hurt you in the next week, accidentally. <laughs> Not that it didn't bother him a bit, you know. I'd have eaten french fries or whatever he did, right on along. But every once in a while you run across one in a place like McDonald's or Burger King, you know. And a youngster that's just so polite and so nice. I don't know. It's simply God's will, y'all. Younger, submit to the elder. Somebody said, well, I wonder why. I don't know why. He don't tell us why exactly, to my knowledge. But I can guess. Now, please follow me here. Younger, submit yourselves to the elder. Wonder why that is. Anybody here ever worked a job? Anybody here ever got up morning after morning at the crack of dawn and gone to work? Day after day, after week, after month, after year. Anybody here ever supported a family? Anybody here ever provided for a family? You deserve respect. Some little snot-nosed, wet-behind-the-ears rascal comes up to you and wants to call you a, a name, and you're standing there looking down through these wrinkled eyes and balding, graying head, war slam out because you've been working for a living all your life. You deserve respect just if you've maintained for 20, 30, 40, 50. Can I get a witness, anyone? Respect. Working people deserve respect. Boy, this guy walking around with his britches hung down to his knees. Yeah. Well, I ain't got a job because I don't need one. I'm thinking, man, I could find you a job at my house. You can rake leaves, kill mosquitoes. I mean, there's something you could be doing. You're here today and you're a working man. That'd be reason enough for the younger to respect the elder. How about this one? Anybody here ever birthed a baby? 
ever lived the years of life and tried to do halfway right deserves some respect, deserves some recognition, deserves for those younger than he or she to acknowledge, if nothing else, their years of trying to do right. I have nothing but respect for a working man and a working woman. I don't know what God thinks and why he wanted the younger to submit to the elder, but I know it's his will. It's just his will. And you know, I thought about this one, hesitated in writing it down. I don't care how old you are, if you're younger than anybody, this applies to you. Amen? A little more amen wouldn't hurt. We got people here, we got a great uh, group of folks that are 80 years old plus. One of them pointed to me out the other day. She said, you know, I'm, uh, I forget exactly what Dorothy said. No, I better not mention her. <laughs> She said, you know, all these in a row here, I'm the youngest. I'm only 80. And I said, Dorothy, oh, scratch that name. <laughs> You're the only one getting rid of to get, get away with saying that. I can't say that. I think they're proud of being old. Amen. <laughs> Who wouldn't be, y'all? <laughs> I made it to church this morning. I drove down the bypass two days in a row and I ain't in a hospital. That's reason enough to be proud. <laughs> Listen. But if anybody's older than you are, this applies to you. Younger, you ain't but 80, she's 83. Let's get it done. Arrange yourself under in an orderly fashion. They, don't you like stuff like that? I don't know. Anyway. So now the younger's been shown what to do. And how to do it, why you should do it. Relationship number two, all of you be subject one to another. Verse number five, not only the younger to the elder. By the way, this is God's word, y'all. This ain't something I made up. This is not simply something to talk about. This goes along with what I'm saying. What are we going to see on the news after the uh, election is over? It, it, does anything else go on in the world today? <laughs> Yeah, it's not a point that <laughs> Number two, all of you be subject one to another. Now this is directed primarily at church folks. And if you've been in the church, uh, not, well, some churches anyway, very long, you can appreciate this. Who here knows what a big shot is? Anybody? Big shot. Don't nobody want to say nothing or you've all fell asleep, one or the other. A big shot, somebody thinks he's more important than somebody else. Anybody? You ever known anybody like that? Yeah. Always has to have the last word. Always have to have his or her way. Always has to put his or her two cents in every conversation. Always taking credit for something that he's done because he loves the limelight because he feels like he deserves it. Who wouldn't praise me? <laughs> Big shot! Now my experience has been, and, and I, I need to be preaching this into the mirror because I know I'm the world's worst, but spiritually speaking, when the cat in the church is the big shot, in reality he's the little dud. <laughs> now I thought that up, y'all. Big shot, little dud. You ever been out somewhere, and uh, this is politically incorrect, incorrect, whatever, and you've needed for your gun to shoot? 
and it didn't. Now, if you've never been there, we got these things in Wanchi's called snakes. <laughs> and I ain't talking about insurance, man. <laughs> oh, man, insurance, man. <laughs> Y'all listen, and I know the tree huggers say, oh, that snake's an important part of the ecological chain. I don't care what important part of whose chain he is. If he's in my yard, y'all, he's baked. Poof. <laughs> well, every once in a while, they slip up and get the best of it. And have you ever been here and seen one closer to you than he needed to be? And that's a long way for me. Well, every once in a while you're prepared and you pull out the little 38 and you pull the trigger and don't nothing happen. What a blessing. It's like you can hear that little slither going, <laughs> now what are you going to do? <laughs> Big shot. A lot of talk. A lot of smoke. In reality, just a little dud. Dud! No shoot, no show. Who cares in this world, y'all? Philippians 2, 3, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. And by the way, nothing in the Greek means nothing. Amen? But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Now that's not hard to understand. There's nothing unclear about this. It's God's will that every disciple learn the discipline of esteeming others above yourself, i.e. arranging yourself under one another. Now I thought about this thing and I thought the better. Get everybody to turn around and look at somebody. And then tell whoever you're looking at, you're better than me. <laughs> and see, I said I thought the better of it, because before we're done here, we're going to have fisticuffs. <laughs> There's something about that, y'all, that just don't, it, it's like it don't want to come out of your mouth. Any of you men ever done anything wrong to your wives? Don't you love, I see you shaking your head. Don't you love being able to say, I'm sorry, I apologize, you bust out in that old song, I don't remember who sung it, you're absolutely right, you've been right all along, you're absolutely right and I'm wrong. Don't you love saying that to your wife? You ever lie in church? <laughs> it's just like there's something in there, you know, part of ego is like doors that shut back there. <laughs> The, uh, <clears throat> the wife asked her husband, does this dress make me look fat? <laughs> Smartest man I think one of that I've ever known, he shoved an entire baby Ruth into his mouth before he answered the question. <laughs> so thank you, baby. Thank you, dear. <clears throat> This idea, y'all, is not natural. That's why I say it's a discipline that has to be learned. You're better than us. Isn't that what it says? In lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Now, can you imagine what your typical Baptist church would look like if the younger submitted themselves to the older and if everyone submitted themselves to one another? Y'all, I'm telling you, it would be different. We're living in a world where ranking myself under some is absolutely unheard of. I am certainly more important than anybody. That's why I can walk in front of you at McDonald's. I mean, just, I mean, look at me. Aren't I a sight to behold? Now, I'm not talking about me here. Y'all are giving me the bad eye. Huh? Well, somehow that seems to be the way we're thinking. So now, not only has the pastor been shown what to do, how to do, and why to do, not only has the young person been shown what to do, how to do, and why to do, but all the rest of us rank and file is being shown what to do, how to do, and why we're to do it. 
it's God's will that we think more highly of others than we do ourselves. And if we would do that, y'all, there'd never be another big shot. And I dare say there'd never be another church split. And I dare say there'd never be nobody standing around in the parking lot talking about the preacher or the deacon or the Sunday school teacher or the choir director. We'd only be saying good things about each other. Say, yeah, but you don't know the people we got in our church. <laughs> Y'all, it has nothing whatsoever to do with someone's perceived wealth or worth or, or, or whatever other denomination of money you want to judge that thing by. It's me looking at anyone and everyone and esteeming them in my mind as better than me. This is not hard to do. I can't go to number three because we're slam out of time. But you know how that works? You know? Anybody here know about Dr. Pepper? I ain't talking about the dude that at the urgent care. Dr. Pepper the soda. Years ago, in fact, everything that I can remember is years ago. I don't remember coming to church today. <laughs> do, you, do you remember a little jingle that went with Dr. Pepper? Now, this is spiritual. You all wake up and pay attention to it. I'm a pepper, you're a pepper, she's a pepper, he's a pepper. Wouldn't you like to be a pepper, too? Anybody remember that? Somebody help me here. I'm going down. Hey. Well, look here. Rough translation, Romans 3.23. You won't find Dr. Pepper there, but it could apply. I'm a sinner, you're a sinner, he's a sinner, she's a sinner. Wouldn't you like to admit you're a sinner, too? Be a sinner. Go down, sinner. Y'all are dead in the water. <laughs> this is quality entertainment you're doing. <laughs> what about it, y'all? If I really believe that I'm a sinner, then I shouldn't have any trouble ranking myself under anybody. Yeah, well, he's a sinner, too. Yeah, we got that, Dr. Pepper. We're all sinners. We're all sinners. Where every single... Well, somebody said, yeah, but I ain't sinned as bad as him. <laughs> well, see, you already missed the blooming boat. <laughs> James says, chapter 2, no, you may not have killed nobody. But if you committed adultery, the principle here, the dynamic is, the same one that said don't kill, said don't commit adultery. Point is, the one that calls the shots... You didn't do what he told you to do. That's where we everyone are. That's what's so unnatural about a church full of big shots. A sinner man, a sinner woman comes in, and they feel people looking down their long, self-righteous noses at them. No wonder they don't want to come to church. We ought to greet folk at the door. Man, I'm so glad. Came into a church visiting some years ago. The first word said to him was, Aren't you the guy I saw in the paper the other day that just got out of jail? <laughs> but wouldn't that be a blessing? Hey, ushers, catch on. Hey, ain't you that guy that's been arrested for embezzling? We're so glad to have you. <laughs> Shoo, gone. Good night in this world, y'all, if we could just get grasp of the truth that we've been living on for years. I ain't no better than nobody. Not in God's eyes. So anytime I get proud and air, I wish I could. I really got to quit. You know, one of the eight words used in the New Testament translated pride, one of them is the Greek word for bellows. But know what a bellows is? It's a manufactured windbag. <laughs> anytime I start to think I'm better than somebody, meaning I don't have to grovel before anybody, you know, Pride. Pride's a killer. I got to quit because I keep wanting to go to the next part, but anyway. Let me just end with this thing. Y'all, <clears throat> you're here today. And you've obviously got interest in religion or you wouldn't be here. You, you may even 
be thinking that you're Christian, you're filling out an application, and if it's a choice between Muslim or Christian or Democrat, or uh, you fill out that. What's the thought of the sky rolling back, the angels shouting, the dead rising, and Christ appearing today? What does that thought do? It don't get any more personal than this. Only you know that answer. Does it make you afraid? Does it cause you to worry? Like a little dubious. Y'all, if it weren't for the Bible, I'd be all of the above. Probably, could the truth be known, I've sinned with the best of them. Maybe just like some of y'all. But the Bible tells us that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That whosoever believeth in Him should not perish. You don't have to get what's coming to you. Jesus got what was coming to me. And I sin every day. But I'm learning as a disciple, I can confess that sin every day. And the Bible says, have it washed away. When Gabriel had a stain on his britches yesterday. His daddy asked him, are those pants clean? Yeah, they've been washed two or three times. Stain wouldn't come out. Y'all said there is, there is no such sin stain that won't come out. What's the thought of Jesus coming today to do in your heart? Mm -hmm. If there's anything between you and He, do you know it can be tended to right now? It can go one inch. He can take away all that fear, all that dread, all that anxiety, even answer those questions for you. If you just care to meet Him. You say, what are you talking to meet? He's not even here. Well, he's here enough that you can meet Him. And I would invite you today, if, if you cannot with full assurance, rest easy with the thought of the sky parting and meeting Christ face to face, to just let Him have His way in your life today. No matter what you've done, no matter who you've done it with, or how many times. The Word of God promises you would you pray with me? Father, thank you for Christ. And I know what we know of him is only in the Bible. And that to some is a stumbling block. They want to see more and feel more and experience more. <coughs> Save the moments today? No. But taking that one step of faith and all of those things are answered, they see plenty and they feel plenty. And they experience plenty. <clears throat> Father, help decisions to be made here this morning. Jesus, you even said yourself, if you just do my will, You'll know whether it's of the Father or not. Please, God, help today. Help us to make whatever decision we need to. And we pray in Christ's name. I'm going to ask you to keep praying, if you will. Pray for the one beside you, behind you, in front of you, whatever the case may be. But we pray that that person can be touched by God today. It's reality, or I wouldn't even say such a thing. As our group sings, anything you'd like to come up to what we call our altar, pray for a moment, just you and God. I, I want you to come. If there's something that I can help you with, I want you to come. But as our group sings, please respond. Won't you come?